Welcome to our lesson on other types of regression, right? Multiple regression and nonlinear regression. Now, most of the things we're going to be talking about in this lesson are um, things that we have to use technology. There's not going to be much that we can do by hand, and a lot of this is just going to be uh, theory and stuff that you just need to be aware exists. For an introductory statistics class, you really don't have to uh, worry with doing much of this other than interpreting uh, outputs that you might see from various uh, technologies. In a more advanced class, you would actually learn how to run these things and how better to interpret them. So let's start off with um, you know multiple regression and what exactly that means. When you hear the term multiple regression, it just means that you're running linear regression with more than two variables. So you're still trying to find that regression equation that best fits your data. You're still trying to find one that minimizes the uh, square uh, residuals, but you now have more than one input. You no longer have just an X and a Y, you have multiple X's if you want to think of it going into one Y. And so you can no longer really run a scatter plot because, you know, how do you run a scatter plot with three variables? When you have a multiple regression equation, it's just like the original one with your B0 and your B1. In fact, if you look at this first part, everything in yellow is just your original regression equation, right? B0 plus B1, X instead of X1, only now we call it X1 because we have multiple X's, right? And so now we have another B times our other X, etc., etc., all the way up to the last B times the last X. So you still have um, a, a, a linear equation, nothing's being squared, but you just have multiple X's with multiple B's. And it's still your sample size. Um, K is now a new variable we haven't seen and it's just your number of predictor variables. It just means how many X's do you have? You have K many of them. Y hat is still your predicted value of Y and then your set of X's are now all considered your predictor variables. You have to use more advanced techniques to run these. Um, you can run them sometimes in uh, the calculators but for the most part stack crunch Excel, things like that are the better way to go. Minitab, of course, if you know how to use it, or SPSS and SAS. Here's a simple example. A random sample of heights of mothers, fathers, and their daughters. They want to find the multiple regression equation in which the response variable is the height of the daughter and the predictor variables are the heights of their parents. So instead of just looking at the influence that a mother might have on a daughter's height, we're going to look at the influence that the mother and father combined have on the height of their daughter. The idea being that you know two tall people will have a taller child versus two shorter people would probably have a shorter child. And if you had one tall person and one short person, the child could go either way, right? If you put that data into Minitab in this case, you would get this as your regression equation and you can see you've got a B0, right, 7.5. It's kind of silly because in this case that means if uh, both your mother and father had no height whatsoever, which is impossible, uh, the daughter would still be 7.5 units tall. And, and what was this in? This was in, um, doesn't say. Let's say inches. Um, but what's more realistic is you could actually use heights of mothers and fathers, put it into this equation, and get predicted values for the height of the daughter. You'll also notice that for every inch taller the mother is, that contributes to 0.7 inches for the daughter, whereas for every inch taller the father goes, that only gives us 0.16, which would make it seem like the mother has far more influence on the height of the daughter. Maybe that's true because of the genetics, because we're actually testing a daughter here, but it also could be uh, due to the fact that we put the mother's data into the uh, equation first and the father's data second. What a lot of people don't know about multiple regression is the order in which the variables are put into the model can sometimes influence how important they may seem. If we switch these and put the father's height in first and the mother's height in second, we might actually get a closer um, answer for father. You know, the father's uh, slope might be closer to 7, and the mother's might be closer to this 1.16 type of thing. 
your r squared and your adjusted r squared still the same thing you got from before right it, it's still an r squared it's still giving you the uh, coefficient of determination it's still telling you the proportion of the variability in your y that is being predicted by your model so in this case we're getting that roughly 67 and a half or if we use the adjusted version about 64 percent of the variability in a daughter's height is somehow predicted or accounted for by the heights of the mother and the father and the other 30 some odd percent right is due to other things this set of information here and especially the p uh, portion tells us that our regression equation is in fact um, statistically significant right because we have that small p value so just realize how to interpret these results the multiple coefficient of determination is just what we call the coefficient of determination when we have multiple inputs and the and that's just how well the equation fits the sample data. The adjusted coefficient of determination is the multiple coefficient of determination modified to account for the number of variables in the sample size. It's, it's an adjustment that's done to just give us a more accurate result. This is the formula for doing the adjusting if you ever had to do it by hand. In the uh, From the preceding results we got a modified one, an adjusted one of 63.7 so when we compare this multiple regression equation to others, it's better to use the adjusted R versus the, the regular one. Just gives us a more uh, comparable measure. The p-value is the measure of the overall significance of our equation, just like it always is. Because we got a zero, which is really, really small, this indicates that the regression equation has a really good overall fit, and it is usable for predictions. Finding the best multiple regression equation, really the only way to do it is with technology. Um, if you're trying to compare one to the other, just look at p-values. That's the best way to compare. Um, consider equations with high values of the adjusted R and then try to include only a few variables at a time. This is talking about if you have more than two variables and you want to find the best regression equation, you can try uh, multiples, right? Instead of, let's say you had seven variables that you think all um, have an influence on the daughter's height. Well, instead of just throwing all seven of them into the equation, maybe start with two and then add a third and see if it helps or start with a different set of three. The idea is to kind of get the best results you can from the smallest number of variables. And there are ways to let the technology do it for you. Here's an example. If we use predictor variables of age, foot length, right, shoe print size, foot length and shoe print size, and then age, foot length, shoe print, si uh, shoe print length, and shoe size, these are all the different um, R squareds or adjusted R squareds and p-values that we get. So this is going back to the, the data that we had with the 40 uh, people where we had uh, their heights and their shoe uh, sizes and are and their the lengths of their feet and we had a bunch of other data as well and if we add more of it into this multiple regression we can see that the best right the biggest r squared we got was from just using foot length all by itself and that's also a very small p value if we use just shoe print length all by itself we get a slightly smaller one now we can get a better, right, a slightly higher adjusted R squared if we use both foot length and shoe print length, but because those two things are pretty much the same thing, shoe, uh, foot length and shoe print length, it really doesn't help us enough to justify putting both of them into the model. So we're better off just using just one right foot length and the same that goes for using what is that one two all four things we only went from a 0.7 to a 0.75 which is not that much better to adjust to justify adding that many more things to the model so in this example we actually find that a simple linear regression is better than multiple regression based on the data that we have we can use critical thinking and statistical analysis for these types of things um, but it all comes down to you want to find the best uh, expression you can with the least number of variables. 
We can use dummy variables to do um, logistic equations. Um, a dummy variable is just a way of giving a value to things that might not have numerical values. And the most common one are dichotomous variables. Yes, no questions, or male, female, right? Alive, dead, um, has brown hair, doesn't have brown hair, right? Democrat, non-Democrat. Or you could even do non-dichotomous and do um, Democrat, Republican, independent, blah, blah, blah. but then it gets a little trickier because how do you give those values, you know, like would you let Democrat be one and then Republican be two and then independent be three, but then now, so you're saying an independent is three times as big as a Democrat, right? So it, it kind of gets weird to, to do more than two, you know, dichotomous ones. So usually with di dichotomous, it works better and you just give them zeros and ones, which just represents failure and success, not having the category and having the category. So now uh, we could use uh, that idea and um, the, the gender of the parents and get this type of data. So now we're looking at the parents, their heights, the height of the child, and then the gender of the child and see if maybe uh, it's related better for female children or maybe it's related better for male children or maybe the gender of the child also has some bearing on their height right typically men are taller than women so using technology we can plug the same stuff in putting in zeros and ones for male and female and then we get this equation here you'll notice now that the uh, coefficient right the slope for the height of the mother has gone from 0.7 down to 0.3 the height of the father has gone up a little bit to 0.19 and then the the sex the gender has the largest one of 4 we can use the similar idea of dummy variables and we can use them instead of a predictor variable we can use a dummy variable as a response variable so now we're trying to predict whether or not somebody is in a certain category given all these different inputs, what's the probability that somebody will have cancer or won't have cancer, right? A yes or a no, a zero and one. And in that case, we have to do what's called logistic regression. So this is a whole other type of regression analysis, um, but that involves your response variable being a yes or no variable. We also have nonlinear regression things where we're just trying to fit the data to something that's not a straight line. There are three basic rules for identifying a good mathematical model. You want to graph your th variables and look for a pattern. You can find and compare values of your R squared, or you can just use some common sense and think about it. Some of our generic models, linear, quadratic, logarithmic, etc., etc. There's a picture for linear, quadratic, logarithmic, exponential, power, right? So when you graph your dots and you see them having one of these patterns, then you know which one to f try and fit it to as far as um, an equation is concerned. Here's a simple example. We have um, population size and we want to use this model to try and predict the size of the US population in the year 2020. Now instead of putting in 1800 we can just code them and you can see that they go up by 20 years right so 1800 and 1820 it's 20 years up so the next one if we want to get 2020 we'd be looking for an input of 12 because it would be the next one up after 2000 when we graph our data we see that pattern which looks awfully similar to either um, a power or an exponential or even half of a quadratic so we can test all of them and see which one fits the best and surprisingly enough quadratic fits the best right it has the, the largest r squared so that equation becomes our best predictor that's the one that we use and if we want to figure out 2020 remember that's when x equals 12 so we put 12 into the equation and we get roughly 337 million okay that's everything you guys have to worry about with multiple and nonlinear non regression it's mainly just being able to recognize outputs and go well this one's the best because r squared is the highest and then doing some simple analyses of making predictions based on some some of those um, equations